well to uh, Atlanta's left. I Eric. do. Yeah. So that's the one we did the uh, right. photogrammetry on. That's so this one's kind of uh, broken up there, as you can see. Yeah, it's just so like a knife edge that comes out. Yeah, Rice changed her uh, her heading to look south as we. Yeah. You want to keep coming up or? No, I think I think we're okay. Roger. So. Uh, <laughs> we kind of got a an orbit map of the face of it. I could come up and down and map it, or we could uh, continue on. Let, let's keep going up a little. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you want, we could turn Hercules to the yeah, west and do it and, and do a yeah. quick. Pass to get yep. a get a look get at what here. the whole thing it looks like. Yeah. Winch control up ten, please up ten. Uh, we have a viewer asking if this could be, have been a wall between two flows. Could ver very well have been. Yeah, it's really quite remarkable in terms of how knife edge it is. You see, right up here it gets a little thicker as it moves towards the crest. Or two, two segments draining separately, leaving, leaving something in the middle to solidify. I could do a, a rapid descent and ascent there if you want to pick that up, but I don't know. I don't know. Or keep coming up. That's what Larry wants. Yeah. Right it. I think if we can't get that other side too. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. He's going to have to get Our uh, radio headset comms aren't working too well, so I use the, uh, I'm using the real radio. You might, uh, we can try it, but. Yeah, okay, if you can pivot left. And see if we can see if we can get that other side, the, this this side. Sorry, Larry. Say again. Well, let, let Chris. If we're trying to capture the this side of the feature, can we turn left and get that side. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So we're you want to do a multi-beam right. survey, not a photo survey. Okay. Exactly. Okay. I think the best thing to do, yeah, is back up a little bit so you have a little more tether. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll. Uh, you're gonna have to do two, one on each side. Yeah, that's the only way we're gonna get it. Yeah. Remember, the, the sonar is, is only on one side. So it's only one side. <laughs> so if I uh, drop down here, you should get it. Yeah. Different. Yeah, if you drop down a bit, if you drop down a bit, we'll get a better view. See, but it, but, it, but it's 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 situated on the left side, so it's really the left side view. That's the. Somebody's asking about how big the the whole map is. If you look really closely, you can see Hercules in the map, and Hercules is about the size of a a mail truck. Yeah, and that red grid there is a twenty by twenty meter grid okay. with show Hercules me, in the show center. Show me the map, Chris. I'm flying off your map, so. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, third person viewing. Ah, That's I probably good right there. Roger. Yeah, and so. now and now just do your rotation. Rotate, right? Yeah, do your very slow rotation. Roger. We're gonna, without moving problem. the ship, we're not gonna get an ideal angle, but we'll at least get something nice and slow. Nice and slow, right? Yeah, it's looking good, Dan. 
It's coming around by itself there. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is looking great. And then what we'll do is move to the other side and do just same. do the same thing. Right. Keep coming if you got any more. Yep, got plenty. Uh, Larry, we have Looks a... Looks like I need a, to come up and do the same thing again. A, a viewer's asking why... Yeah, we could. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, coming up. Uh, why in some areas is the rock visible in mo uh, more than in other areas? This is going to take the, a lot like of the dark stitching spots. together. <laughs> well, it, ha it has to do with the currents just mm -hmm. brushing yeah, off the, okay. the, the soft sediment that's the... Yeah, so you can see right here it looks like that yeah, was kind of the top. So if you get up to that... Suggested. Uh, come up 10 on the winch, please. He's coming up, and then we'll come back up. Don't just stay calm. Okay. Yeah, that's back. probably good altitude. I think that's high enough? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Nice and slow. A little slower, if you can. Okay. Yeah, I can, I'll put it in auto, and then it'll... See what I got. What I got here for velocity. Uh, and Chris, so we're gonna. You think you, get, you can get around and get the other side? Yeah, we can. Yeah, good. Yeah. We're just getting a higher altitude yeah, no, sweep I know of I, it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I know that. I just wanna. This is not ideal positioning, but we'll we'll at least get a decent view on the shape. These sweepy surveys like this are not normally mm -hmm. ideal, but they are quicker than setting up a whole scan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got an auto heading now to velocity crank way down, so. All right, that's good. Should move super slow. Painfully slow. That's, yep, that's kind of <laughs> what we want. <laughs> Chris, can you zoom out on the high tech survey? Uh, not right now. Okay. Uh, you can take the high pack. You should be able to take the high pack screen right there because I have it released. Okay. Uh, except I can't. Yeah, I have to put it on the other. Oh, zoom out on, on this, you mean? Or? No, 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 no. You stay, stay right where you are there. I might be missing some pieces there. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, well, that's, I the, a, that's the game. I could do a double sweep here. Okay. Or just fly forward. Yeah, actually, if you just scan forward at at sort of your ending angle, yep. we might get it. Can do. And that'll be a good that'll be a good pass too, yep. that I may be able to use. Came for the came for the photogrammetry and stayed for the Norbit. That's right. <laughs> so the shadows, the noise that's filling in in the back there. That there. It should come back. It's uh, it's grabbing some stuff in the distance. Uh, there's probably yeah. See, there's something behind. Uh, we have a question about how old Hercules and well, Atalanta are. Welcome to so. my world. There's always something more. You want to always look just around the next corner. <laughs> they were built next uh, turn of the century. <laughs> <laughs> so Hercules was built, uh, was first launched in 2003, and Atalanta was first launched in 2019. Keep turning until uh, yeah, until this merges and get a get a little bit of overlap. That'll help me with registration. Right. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, you, well, no, it's it's lining up pretty well. That's actually really good, since we mapped that a long time ago. But yeah, keep it going so because some overlap will help an awful lot. Right. And a question from a viewer: What is your favorite part about exploring hydrothermal vents? Uh, finding them. <laughs> yeah, and then if you take go here and you back up a bit, 
and then we do that sweep forward, we can maybe fill in this area a bit. Are we lined up with it now or keep coming around? Yeah, this is good. You don't need to come around any further. Roger. Okay, I'm backing up. So far on this watch for me, it's just learning about how different they are from like the ancient ones that we, from the ancient uh, seamounts and the ancient um, geology that we've explored so far in this ex expedition. You only need to back up a couple meters. So that's yeah, been right. that's been really cool and even seeing. You don't just have a ton of tether to go, right? Yeah. Uh, how no, the, the sediment is so much softer, the so much more delicate. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. 10, 20. All right, that's plenty of back. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll stretch it out here at the step. Yeah. Uh, you can come down, uh, fif down 15 on the winch. Uh, well, let me get out just a little bit more. Yeah. down 15 at 10 meters a minute. Larry, have you seen any? Seen any what? Seen any, sorry, I was just letting them do their winch thing. Uh, seen any hydrothermal vents? Uh, no, it, it's supposedly on the last watch, uh, Bob Waters uh, saw some shimmering water in small vents, but uh, I don't Oh, I just meant in your career. Oh, in my career, mm -hmm. oh, that's a good question. Um, All right, um, blue I water think I've here. Been on a cruise that actually did to the end see of the tether. on the Galapagos cruise where we found that they weren't where they should have been, and they had been buried. And then uh, the next leg went, moved further down the ridge crest, and they found a bunch more. But I don't think I've been on a cruise that actually. That'll like this is going to be a really them. excellent pass. We got good pings along the whole mm. thing. Come uh, okay, counterclockwise one eight zero, please. Right? That should be a little Norbit tagline. Good pings along the whole thing. <laughs> Either way, it's fine. That is what we're looking for. It's a beautiful map, Chris. Okay, and each cube is uh, 50 centimeters each, or so? Yeah, each cube is 50 centimeters. But by the time I'm done processing and registering and registering parts of the map to themselves, we should be able to you get down to and, uh, maybe two five centimeters. Look the inverse of uh, come right around, come left, come left, come left. Hard left, hard left, keep coming left. Uh, right about there. Yeah. Uh, that'll Okay. Uh, that'll put us tail to tail and I'll be able to get the last couple of meters here and fill in the gap. All right. <laughs> Everybody's into it now. Tail to tail. Completionist. At zero delta. Stretch. Oh, you might have to turn a little bit to get that. I can. Uh, it, it should pull. You think it'll Atlanta. make it? Yeah. I can pull out Atlanta. All right. Meters, no problem. All right. And then that, when we're done with this, we'll get back down. And then, uh, uh, we got to do the other side. Yeah. Are we still interested in doing the other side? Yeah. We can do it. If we just do, I think the quickest thing to do would be just do another one of these. Yeah. And then we'll just another excursion into that valley. That gives us that'll give us cleaner data than a turn anyway. I can't turn because I'm tail to tail. No, no, no. I mean, when we do the other one, oh, do yeah. another push out like you did here. Yeah. So at the moment I'm dragging, oh. dragging <laughs> Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> I think you made it, Dan. You can call it whenever you want. Okay, calling it. Okay, that looks good. Okay, yeah. we'll do the other side then. All right. Yep. Yep. Roger. Just maintain this depth and we'll just do the other side right over there and right. Roger, maintain the depth. Let's call it over. good. Okay. You'll get a bonus sweep on the way out here. So yeah, well, counting on it. Atlanta drags us back. It really does give you an idea of the scale of some of this stuff huge yeah. and i mean we're not even seeing the whole thing right we're, we're not even seeing the tops of these cliffs no you can you can stay where you are yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do the same thing but on the other side of this feature here yeah all right you can just hold what you got i'm watching the tether there in our tail cams right, i'm gonna leave that there so you can see what's going on 
ideally, one of these days, actually, we could get you set up pretty easily with your own RViz screen. Yeah. That'd so that nice. your Atalanta pilot can help you visualize. Yeah. Um, We've been using a 3D model of the T4 for, uh, I don't know, at least 10 years now. Yeah. Very helpful. Yes, I mean, especially when you're doing the midwater stuff, that's all you got, really, right? Yeah, well, when you're zoomed in doing uh, work and you can't see the whole arm. Yeah. But you can look at the model and see the orientation of the arm, it's... Saves a whole lot of uh, grief because I'm gonna zoom out, look at my arm. Oh, my orientation is all like you know, wonky. So. so yeah, you're probably gonna want to get to like about this location Roger. with that heading. Same heading? No, no, with the, the along this sort of direction, uh, right? And then we'll do one more push, and I think that'll be plenty. I don't think we need to do the turn each stuff in there. Roger. I can start sliding over now then? Yeah. Yeah, we already got a, we got plenty of sweeps on this side, so we don't need to worry about missing it. Roger. I'm going to angle you a little bit so you can see the potential collision hazards. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I got this all on screen recording too, so. You can send Minecraft videos to your kids then. Oh yeah, they're still <laughs> waiting for one. This will be a good one. They'll lose interest in like thirty seconds. So well, we be, can we can play it back clip. at we can play it back at ten times speed. That's usually yeah. what I do with Hercules videos. <laughs> Mine, Minecraft speed. They move so fast in that game. I can't I can't even keep up. Yeah, for sure. I, I watch them and I get dizzy. It's All right. A uh, question online is asking, what organism do you think fits the description Halloween the most? Doesn't have to be one that you found during these expeditions. I'm about uh, 30 meters from the wall on my left now. Yeah. So I can. So you can. You can. Again, there some yeah, more. You, yeah, you can go right. I, I would say right in the middle. Right. It. We want to keep you. Actually, getting another pass on that wall again will help with registration. Oh, yeah. I have two. Oh yeah. I think that the I think just because of Finding Nemo, I think I've always been scared of the anglerfish. Oh. <laughs> that All right, you're ultimately gonna wanna just like turn scary. left about ninety degrees. Just really gives me. Yeah. The goosefish is an anglerfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know the goosefish is beautiful. You can take control and bump it. <laughs> I'm just glad you called it the goosefish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just doing it this one time. Oh, just, no. Just today, just today. Um, so Rennie showed me, I, and I do not remember. I'm it. so bad at remembering it. Do do this. He showed me an, or, uh, an organism yeah, that was like, it was like right, a, some sort of a worm that had left tentacles just a little on bit. it. Roger. And because uh, one of the kids in the interaction asked uh, about scary things. I right. also think the chimera is just like... Back up just maybe a meter spooky spooky and then go ahead and start your run. Yeah. Roger. Can you hold for uh, 10 minutes? Yeah, I just don't want to change the orientation of the USBL. So just a few minutes, then I'll let you go. Uh, someone's commenting that Rye All right. saw some... Go for it, Dan. Hydrothermal go for it. Uh, when uh, the Nautilus was working with Ocean Network Canada. Rye is in focus mode right now. Yeah, I think so. So uh, maybe we'll get a story time later. Taylor Ann, what about you? What's the most Halloween name or creature? It's a great question that I have not decided yet. Um, I would just be stealing you your answer if I said a chimera. <laughs> Say again, Dan? You want to come up at all there? Or uh, you're happy with the... No, just keep it. I mean, we can't... We're not going to get everything, so... Right. Just keep it, oh, keeping yeah, it the same the as the other. We'll get us better. <laughs> that's cute and creepy. Yeah, that's like a cute... There's also, yeah, the Casper uh, Ooh, octopus. It's uh, yeah. kind of white with a purple hue to it. 
Yeah, it does look like a little Casper. Uh, we did see that on the last expedition, or two expeditions ago, uh, NA-154. We saw one, and we saw, I think, Let's seven Dumbo here. octopods. Um, but yeah, I think most deep sea fish look really spooky. I forgot that this is our bad side. Yeah, I yeah, have to so agree. I, I could scoot over to the right a little. Yeah, that's no, that's okay. You don't. No, it's it's better to be it's better to be further because we'll get better angles on this uh, lower right. bit, right? I can, I can scoot to the left. That's one of the reasons I, I don't want to. That's one of the reasons I don't want to get too high. Keep going ahead here. Oh, the viewer is saying that uh, the previous shift saw a vampire squid for a split second during the descent. Ooh. Oh, yeah, wow. so that was their answer. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a good one. And that one. cuts off right there. Look at that. Oh, Where's it going? Uh, saying the whale <laughs> fall. That yeah, was really that was pretty spooky. Was pretty huh? spooky. <laughs> I'll have to take a but also look at it on the way back down. That hole? Yeah. Almost done. It's like a, maybe it was a. Uh, actually, it might have been a slip in the DVL. See how it built up the points there? Oh, yeah. Although we had good luck, didn't we? I don't know. Yeah. Or the ghost line and that we had to cut ourselves from. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. The yeah. sight of Hercules holding the dive knife. But it's working like it is right now. All right. Maybe on the way back, come up and and stretch your tether when you come back to get your tether back. Uh, just like, as you come back, just come up. Yeah. Can't and then, and because we're going to need to come up anyway to get a move on, right? Uh, I think we're going to go back down to the bottom. Oh, are we? Okay. Yep. yep. All right. I'm happy whenever you are. Yeah, I'm happy. Okay. Okay, I'll come up a bit back out, and uh, we want to follow that feature back down. Yeah, come back down on that feature, and then let's uh, head on to waypoint two. Sorry, say again, Larry. Follow that feature back down come, uh, um, Roger. to the bottom and to waypoint two. Yeah, I'm super jealous of Taylor Ann because they've seen a whale fall. And that is like, like I don't want to say a goal because I feel like that's a little bit, <laughs> that's a little bit macabre, but I would love no, to see No, I mean, one. it's all about the circle of life. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a good way so to we're think about it. we're going to look at that hole or? Uh, we're going to go back down to the bottom, I think, find okay. the marker and the yep. vents. And okay, then, And Roger. then uh, we'll assess and uh, be in a position to... Do a move. I yep. think there is a 3D model of the whale fall online okay, that you, you can, can yeah, uh, explore spin, around. Uh, um, yeah, clockwise, I think we'll take that turn. Uh, did that. I'm going to chase him down after this and go take a look. Ah. I lost the plot. Where's the, where's the that color picture? of these rocks is super cool. Where's Wade? Below me. To my right, below me. I'm above it. My on the, if I come down there, it'll turn into the feature, or is it to my right a little more? Yeah, look to your right a little oh, more. Oh, look at that. Huh. Uh, right point, right point. This is now coming down the side of the feature, right? Yeah, so if you look at, um, if you look at channel three, you can see the movements that we're currently making coming down the, the left side of that feature. Uh, look down just a little for me. What is your most breathtaking event on a dive? Oh, Not necessarily is. scary, more like a wow. Like 
I think just seeing massive yeah, coral or sponge garden. Say, say, can we reduce chatter for a bit, guys? Sure. sure. Uh, say again, Dan. Can you rotate your model counterclock a little bit? For me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want to see. Okay. That's all I needed. Thanks. You need want zoomed in more? Is this good? Uh, no, I just needed a glimpse to make sure I was where I thought I was. Yeah. edges to my right now. Rachel, look. Below me. It is. It's like right here. Huh? Yeah, you're on. There it is. You're on it. Yeah, there it is. Okay. That's where we came out at the top. Yeah. Now I know where I am. I can appear in Atlanta. That should look familiar. That was the, the knife yeah. edge. Been here before. <laughs> that is very cool. <laughs> Did we get a, uh, a waypoint of the marker? Uh, let me check. That would have been handy, right? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. Uh, it doesn't look like we did. That's... Uh... Well, there's a... Data, did you get any? Make a notation of the marker, depth, X, Y, anything like that? Pillar? Yeah, come down to it. There's a question whether uh, anything was recorded about the marker. Uh, that was before our watch, but I took notes on what we said on our watch about there being... But there's, uh, there's nothing back in the logs about... Uh, the details of the marker, depth or X, Y or any of that? Oh, you mean like in C log? I can, yeah, I yep. can go back and look, yeah, yeah. Um, but it'll take me a while. Because I, I don't know what time that happened. Uh, right about I'm correct, it was yeah, right around the beginning of lunch. Yeah, 1135, 1140 local. Okay, that's the bottom of the feature, and okay. I yep. happen to, I think the marker depth was around between 1250, because that's where I left Bob, so, and I know about where I was, so I'm going to head that way, Well, which happens to be the way we went ahead towards the next waypoint anyways, so. Okay. Uh, that's my immediate plan, I'm sure you have. Yeah, no, I, I think um, I'd like to finish the transit to waypoint one, and then we can go exploring. Um, waypoint one is way off to the north. We're at waypoint three right now, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, all right. What information so did you want about the shimmering water location? I have the lat long, if that's what you wanted. Yeah, uh, I want it to magically appear on my nav screen up here. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can read out the lat and long if you'd like. Yeah, one uh, second. Uh, uh, go uh, ahead. Chris okay, uh, latitude 18.905521. Longitude negative one oh, five wait, wait, five. So hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Longitude. Oh, yep. Negative one five five. Yeah. Point two five seven. Yeah. One one six. Okay. Yeah, you're headed right for it, actually, Dan. Yep. All right. Yeah, good. Yeah. Well, let's let's go right by it on our way then. Getting to know the neighborhood. Uh, what was the depth? Between um, 1250 and 1260 is all I can remember. But 1266. 1266. Uh, right. Uh, you can start bringing Atalanta around to, so we're back on the photogrammetry wall. Um, no, I just want to be able to see what's in our future because we're going to plan a vessel move here pretty soon. Um, let's see, 12. Yeah, you come down five. Mm -hmm. 
Larry, sorry, Larry, was that, what is that, like, um, wider stuff that seems to be in between the rocks? It may be uh, just uh, carbonate deposits, calcite deposits of some sort. I haven't uh, come past it to the north, have I? So, still, uh, Mark is still to my north, is it? I believe it. I think you've passed it, I think. Can you uh, check, Chris? Yeah. Yeah, you went, you passed it. Wasn't deep enough there. Should be just to my right then, eh? Yeah. You're kind of pointed right at it right now. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'll back right off on. a little. Should be able to pick it up. But there it is. Oh yeah. Found it. Well, that's always encouraging. I don't see any shimmering water. No. <laughs> okay, let's plan a uh, vessel move uh, to the next waypoint to the north. So, Atlantis currently looking uh, 060. Uh, if you bring All your right, head so around to the left for us, 045. We're going to use uh, Atlantis sonar here to plan our next move. We'll just let the sonar sweep there. Looking around here. Okay, so now we're at a site where, uh, on a previous dive, they actually found uh, a vent and then they left a marker uh, and some weights. We're not seeing any evidence. Is that to the lower right? Is that uh, another marker of some sort, or is uh, that just a rock? It might be a weight. A weight, yeah. Subway. So uh, in theory, 315 should keep us off the wall, maybe three, 300 if you want to be conservative, somewhere between 300 and 315. Well, she so she's looking 045, so 90 to her left is 315, and it's pretty much clear on the sonar that way. Roger. Oh, yeah, 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 he's free to let us get his heading sorted. Forgot all about you up there, Bridge, sorry. <laughs> They're up there in the red line holding while we Yeah, I was like, let's say we were in the middle of the survey and in the hole and everything. I'm like, eh, we can hang out just a second. We're still in the hole. Yeah, but. We're in a hole with a dodgy winch. A viewer is saying that the shimmering water is slightly to the left and you need to be closer. It wasn't very strong. Oh, I see it. I see it right here. Yeah. Where do you see it? You can see it on the oh, left side. Of the I see it. I see it too. <laughs> Good eye. Wow. Yeah, Pete actually just called from the lounge and told us to get closer in. Getting closer, Roger. Downlight's coming on. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Yep, there it is. Yep, there it is. There it is. That's awesome. Wow. Do we have any way of knowing what the temperature of the water is? We do. We have a temperature probe. Ooh. Unfortunately, it's stowed well away. 
Well, we talked about uh, possibly getting it out, but mm -hmm. with all the uh, well, with the unicorn, it was uh, deemed probably not a good idea. And these, oh look, there's three different sources. Yeah. So yeah. there's one right in the middle I of the camera, fourth. one to the left, and one to the right. I see a fourth down at the bottom, bottom left. Okay. Wow. And if yeah. you happen to bump into it, there'd probably be more. <laughs> <laughs> not that Larry's saying to do that. That's very soft, so you see I just yeah. uh, got a little carried away on the thrusters there. And wow. Stirred, stirred all the... Uh, wow. That's a big, strong stream right there, too. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. We, what, we are... Um, uh, I think... We're waiting for the it ship looks, to, It looks uh, like they're. It looks like the heading move is done, so yeah. we can start okay. going. Ooh. Yep. Let's Make sure plug in a move. Two, please. All right. So you want to do like. Twenty meters at a time, nice and slow. Yeah, and you want to go, what? Maybe. Uh, let's say uh, three one zero. Three one zero. Okay, that's pretty. All right. Bridge, bridge, okay. nav, two zero meters, three one zero. I think that's going to take us kind of off of the pretty far off the wall but yeah i'm uh i'm erroring on the side of caution so yep, that's fine i'm just she's uh actually we're breaking the law on two sides so in general we try and keep the wall 20 meters from atlanta and <laughs> it's so there's the you can see here you can see the wall yeah 310 is out that way so that's way clear so yeah. you want to get kind of away and then start heading toward the I next just, point i, I want to move 20 and get us on our sweep i don't want to get a big layback I hear you. Uh, keep Herc out in front where I can also look around because, yeah. I'll be a little more comfortable, but I don't know, you know, another wall is going to be to the north there. The caldera, you know, goes in and out. Yeah. I've never been here before, so new neighborhood, I'm being cautious. It is, it is an extraordinary phenomenon, and if I remember, it was on the order of six to eight yep. million years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Time to come up a bit. Yeah, and these, these, you know, what we saw just there is quite minor. Right? If you go to some of the black smokers and places like that where there's really jets jets of water coming out and and major input of water into the into the deep crust through cracks um, mostly happening around the ridge crests where there hasn't been enough sediment to settle down to fill the cracks and seal it A after after several million years on the seafloor um, so enough sediment will accumulate um, that it'll actually seal it. So it's so the, the the downward part of that plumbing mostly happens on the global ridge ridge crest system where there's still lots of fractures and cracks and that water seeps in. And as 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 you and Bob talked about, on the order of every six to eight million years, uh, the volume the entire volume of the oceans can actually pass through there and be recirculated. And that has that has tremendous uh, impact on the geochemical balances, the chemistry of the water itself. Uh, 76, 
I'll, 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 I'll offer a different perspective. Uh, that, that's absolutely right. But uh, I was a graduate student at that time, and I remember taking a ocean chemistry course. Um, and uh, there was a, you know, the, the, the chemistry of the ocean was balanced before this discovery. And uh, after the discovery, there was a kind of whoops, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we have to redo the redo the equations. <laughs> so, so it's a, it's a there's a lesson there also in hubris how we we think we understand things right, until, until, until we until we learn more, and then we have to re-understand them. And Atlantis is gone. West, what are you doing, Atlantis? So again, what you're seeing uh, right against the wall of this you uh, do a collapse move? pit are uh, exposed pillows there, the inside of what a pillow looks like, that conchoidal fracture uh, mm -hmm. looking uh, now, but all covered with this uh, sulfury material, the yellow sulfury material that's precipitating out from the hot waters coming out of the vents. No, let's, let's do a 315 oh, yeah. move. Let's Another 315? Yeah. Bridge, nav, 20315. We're probably going to have to move the ship 40 to get 20 on Atlanta. 20315. Because Atlanta doesn't have the the weight uh, that Argus does, it doesn't always move in. You got to yeah. You got to uh, get more more scope on it to get Dan, it to go. How far are you, are you off the bottom? You think? Um. Pinging 17 meters here. 17 meters, okay. Uh, I can come back down a little bit. Yeah, that probably wouldn't hurt. We came up just a little because uh, we were uh, a little close there with Atlanta. But, so we moved the ship uh, northwest and Atlanta went west. Move the ship northwest uh, 20 meters, and Atlanta went well. Yeah, maybe northwest two meters. <laughs> I assume you haven't felt strong currents in here. No. no. We should be fairly sheltered from from any of that. I would think. I don't know what's happening on the wire up above us, right? It's gonna kind of do baby steps while we're moving around in here. And we're hitting out a uh, waypoint two. And how far away is waypoint two, Chris? Waypoint two is two ship uh, only. Yeah, only 100 meters. <laughs> yeah. So, so the waypoint two was a place where again vents were found on a previous uh, a previous dive. You can uh, come down five for me when you get a chance. Manel, we have a question about white balance. Um, is there a specific depth that we do it at? Uh, because from that point, it doesn't matter anymore. Or is there still a difference if you do it at 1,200 meters or at 500 meters? Yeah, that's actually a great question. So generally, we do white balance when we reach the bottom. Um, sometimes when we're you know diving on these geographic formations where there's not necessarily a safe place to land, we'll um, We'll forego doing the white balance, but we actually have a little device here that um, has a has a memory of a previous dive, um, so that we can uh, just use that white balance, and that's generally calibrated um, uh, below depths that uh, light penetrates. So um, yeah, at a certain depth, when light can no longer get um, get through, uh, it doesn't really matter as much but yeah that's a really great question really great question yeah sorry I'll come back So that's 40 meters is where the marker? ship moves. Is that the same marker or a different marker? Right? Yeah, like we've moved the ship 40 meters so far, and Atlanta's moved five meters. Yeah. Nothing happens fast, as you know. All right, so we're sitting right. Uh, ahead. No, Atlanta's moved like 18. What? I think it's just the track length is not oh. long enough. 
Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Yeah. That would be nice if it was longer. Yeah. What's up with that? Seems like we've gotten further away from the... So patience is an important part of this game here. Not one of my virtues. Okay, let's try a north move. Okay. Uh, yeah, what's your... 090. Bridge, bridge nav, 20, yeah. due north. You were right, it did take us further away from the wall. You're cheating over there with your Norbit map. <laughs> now, Dan, the, the sector scan, is that um, north up or is it relative to the... Yeah, the, uh, well, the... The sector scan is uh, whichever way the vehicle is facing. Right, so it's relative to the heading of the vehicle. Yeah. Correct. I keep threatening to, uh, there is a, a feature where we can put in the uh, NMEA string into the uh, sonar and have a compass ring move around on the outside. <laughs> I just haven't taken the time to do it. Be a really good project for a board data engineer, but they never get bored either. Uh, someone's suggesting that it looks like we're in outer space, looking down on a desert Earth. Well, I think that's a wonderful, a wonderful analogy. It often is yeah, the you case. Can, uh, come down. The, the problem yes, please, is in yeah. space. If you're looking down, you can see a lot further than we can see. We can see ver we we have a very very limited view. I, I often tell you, I think think about sitting miles above something and only being able to just have this pinpoint pinpoint view uh, quick question for either chris or the back row uh, the waypoint the target depth at waypoint two or the next waypoint well uh, yeah stand by yeah no, I, I don't know the answer to i that. should have that for you help me to know uh, how far to uh it looks like 1300 meters 13, rather, so we can come down. Well, in terms of target depth, I thought you were asking if, if a target was left at the... Ah, uh, no. This helped me to... Uh... Yeah, see, now there's a wall to our north. That's what I was worried about. Dun, 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 dun. Larry, we have a question asking about the RNG stuff. Um, is there a chance that it could be bacterial mat? I, d I don't think so in this case. We, we, it's true that are certainly around uh, hydrothermal vents, and there may well be right, right close to the some bacterial growth. But I think for the most part, what we're seeing is uh, a sulfide precipitate. But uh, certainly around vents, there, there's often uh, large areas of bacterial mats. Uh, but I don't think that's what we're seeing for the most part here, coating the rocks. Again, if we get close, if we see a vent. That's that's quite active, and close to that, we might it might have a much better chance than to see a, a bacterial mat. Are any of the uh, camera geeks in here? We have uh, Rachel. Rachel, you consider yourself a camera geek, I assume. Um. Yeah, I would. I would. I would. Uh, you know. Rachel's I, uh, more of an alpha geek. Uh, oh, what, an alpha geek? Alpha camera, geek, camera yeah, geek. top of the food chain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the yeah, just why don't you just go ahead and take my lunch money there, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> That's a compliment nowadays, I hope you know. Yeah. Uh, the port side stereo camera seems to be... Uh, oh, yeah, it looks like it's being a bully on. stuck on stupid. Yeah, um, exactly. We are, we're still seeing images coming from it. I think that this might be an issue with the top side video display. The OBS? Uh, yep. Uh, there. Have you got the refresh button to work? I get it to work about half the time. Um, hey, Manal, uh, be advised, we might need to take uh, the Triclops off of SAT3 while we troubleshoot this. Copy that. Um, we have a question about what those squiggly little right. fish are that float move? by. Do you want another move in, Dan? Right. I think so. Okay, another north one? Sure. Bri uh, bridge, bridge nav, 20 
due north. So you see the the pink wall at, uh, to our north there. And that's the bottom meters, you're looking at here, right? 50 meters away. So you see the bottom looks much different than the wall. It's just a, a lot of collection of debris on the bottom, and, which is part of the collapse probably of the of the roof of this feature. As the, the lava solidified on, on the top and then the bottom, the molten lava pulled out of it. Um, the solidified part of the top collapsed. And I think that's what we're seeing covering the floor here. Yes, please. Yeah, and in, in a sense, what this collapsed caldera is uh, is a super large version of that happening vertically. The lava pulled out um, and, and collapsed the feature. Um, I think it depends on what the local plumbing looks like here, and I suspect there there may be side side vents can that have drain uh, too, and, and we just have a chance to, to find them. Uh, can you hit H11 and cycle through the uh, PCs? Uh, when, when the lava one, drains two, three, like four. that, when you have an event that collapses... Uh, uh, H11 is your destination. ...a pit like this, yeah. it often leads to construction uh, on PC. the side of the volcano. It has to go somewhere. Should be over to your right. And, right uh, yeah. and I think there was some of that certainly much hit, lower uh, down on the see volcano. What's on one. Um, maybe not so much associated yeah, with the 1996 event, but certainly with other events. Um, and so that implies there is a plumbing system that would have tubes like that. And it's just a question of, of seeing them. It's, it's, as, as, as we've talked about many times, our field of view is very, very small. So that there may be many, many more things there that we're just not, not seeing. Well, I, 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 I suspect that there, there's the equivalent of what a lava tube would look like. Yeah. Yeah, I believe on our last expedition we saw some small lava tubes. They weren't like big enough for the ROV to go right. in, but pretty small. Someone's commenting that it, this area is quite spooky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, appropriate for Halloween, I guess. But again, it, it is so interesting that the, the floor of the, the pit is, is is very, very different looking than, than the walls. And again, you're seeing all, of the, all the material that, that collapsed with the pit itself. 1,300, you said, right? For the waypoint two? Yeah. 1,282 is what uh, I have listed. What's that? 1,282 I have listed for waypoint right. 2. All right. Here. All right. This ship's move's done. Do you want to start heading a little more towards the yep. waypoint? Yeah, we'll follow the, we can follow the contour line now. Yep. And then Bridge, Ta nav, 20020. Zero, zero, yeah, so yeah, I think you do want to come up a bit because it's it's. Yeah, we want to come up the hill to it. So yeah, we've moved down below the uh, pink wall of death there, yeah. so we can kind of. Now that looks like uh, if you could, can you uh, in position to stop and zoom in on that white stuff. Sorry, uh, white stuff. Yeah, if I'm seeing correctly at the bottom of the triclops. Bottom of triclops, right. 
Okay, now you're getting mid mid frame. Mid frame. You see it in the Zeus camera, Larry? Yeah, um, uh, see it on Zeus. Maybe not. Let's see. If you're, it's right in between the right, coming in between on the bottom of the triclops. Uh. Right there. In between the two wide angle. Yeah, right in the middle of the middle of the frame now. Roger. I'm just trying to figure out what that is. I'm not sure what you're bright, looking at. Bright white. No, on two. It's on Zeus too, right next to that rock pile to the left. Left of the rock pile. To the left of the rock pile. Yeah, see Yeah. Yeah, if you zoom in right there. Okay. Right, Go ahead and analyze it in there a bit. I'm still not sure what he's will do. There you go. Yep, yep, keep going, keep going, yep. Oh, that stuff. Yeah, I'm just trying to look at all that stuff. Look How do you see that stuff? Yeah. I noticed today you were reading your phone without your glasses. I can't do that. <laughs> you see? Any tighter? It's a little roll. Yeah. So I, w I would guess that there was a little vent there at some point. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. You pull out. Copy that. Yeah, you can go in, thanks. All right. All right, we'll just pan right a little. There you go. More, a little more. more. Yeah, okay, I just want to see the beginning of that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a real high concentration of that stuff, and whether it's just been sheltered as it's falling downhill or. Whether there was a source of it, I just wanted to check that out. Do you want to see it closer there? Or you no, 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 no. You're good. That's right. Okay, I'm gonna turn it. You're, start, you're starting to avalanche anyway. Yeah. We gotta go this way along the contour. Yep. I may have missed it, but did we ever get an ID on that little squiggly fish that we've been seeing down here? No, they've been way too far away for me to be able to tell. Gotcha. But once I do, I will let you know. So you see, on the bottom here, it also looks like um, underneath the debris is a slow. Just a bit on the so as, as the lava withdrew, Zoom in. it left yeah, more of a sheet. Little, yeah. And then the debris more, from the top more. fell down on top of it. I can see who's who in the zoo there. I think very much so, yeah. And this same, and these same processes happen up on Kilauea. They'll, they'll have oh, collapses and craters form. Uh, we can do as another the magma move. comes up Chris and then like, uh, goes back down. Same one, yeah. You could probably do zero four five ish or yeah. Same one. Keep us going along the contour. Yeah, and again, right. if, if we can, yeah, I think you're heading that Ray way. Bridge nav two zero zero two five. Yeah, we're trying to stand Atlanta off so I can. All right. Okay. So you see, there are areas that you have the the yellow deposits kind of concentrated. And it's either the result of it, debris collecting in, in a certain spot or a local source for venting. It's not ubiquitous like it was near the top. Uh, viewers commenting, it'd be interesting to see if those were the origins of the manganese nodules. Well, certainly the 
the minerals that are put out by hydrothermal vents play an important role in terms of the chemistry of the ocean that then gets precipitated into manganese nodules and, and the fluids that they found in this volcano were certainly rich in manganese, uh, rich in iron, very high CO2 levels. If I remember, it was the CO2 levels were four times higher than the background uh, level in seawater. You can see also now, this is this is really interesting, on, the, on, the, on this flow, the sheet that really probably represents the bottom of the caldera, you also start seeing this uh, structure in the basalt itself, the little ripples and things like that, that's as the lava as the lava um, cooled and flowed. And there are, pi there are pillows now there too. Can I get yeah. I'm trying to come under you here. Yeah. yeah, and I think you can see you see the the top of that pillow. It looks like it was exfoliating. Like the you see several of the pillows look like the outer the outer parts are falling apart. It's the glass that's the most yeah, reactive. The, come up a bit more. the part that was instantly exposed to the seawater um, when the lava was put out and that we, it quenches as we call it it cools very very fast doesn't have time to form any kind of uh, internal structure so it's a same Should chemistry be, uh, but it's a I'm glass come, uh, and so that glass is uh, much more reactive in terms of breaking to to down the the than the basalt that cooled more slowly and so there'll always be that that ongoing reaction of, of the glass breaking down. Yeah, yeah no, in New Hampshire, University of New Hampshire. Uh, yeah, so, so I, 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 I'm directing a, a large lab, a lab of about 100 and 115 people. And so I don't have that much time for teaching anymore, but over the years, I've taught introduction to marine geology and geophysics at the, at the graduate student look, level. Uh, zero, four, Again, there's just right. beautiful structures, flow structures on the basalt. Um, and uh, I also teach a, a very high level course in what we call seafloor characterization, the attempt to use sonars to remotely identify um, seafloor properties. Yeah, so this, this is really neat. So you think about the the big mass of magma that kind of had a cool top and, and then it withdrew. And I think we're seeing the final vestiges of that withdrawing uh, in this sheet flow, kind of a, a little lava lake that was on the bottom. But there was all that void on top and, and the debris you see and we saw uh, just before was, was the stuff on top that cracked and fell. But this is actually now the, the, the lava itself at, at probably at the level that at which it withdrew too, and so what uh, Dan the top of the caldera was at about 1220 meters or uh, so? That's kind of where I came in. Yeah, 1220. Yeah. I'm not sure what the yeah, top we're is. We're down almost at 1300. Yeah, so it yeah, started so getting eight, steep walls. Yeah, so a withdrawal of 80 to 100 meters of lava that is in width um, What's about a kilometer the, the width of this kilometer Chris? Uh, of this caldera is this little pit is about a kilometer or so yeah stand by i'll get yes. you an exact number yeah. is that the boat over right over waypoint two now that's correct yep yeah they, it's about 500 meters across larry 500 meters okay so yeah, yeah so we have 500 meters uh across so all right do you want to start inching up on the wall yeah and, right. and hey, about Rachel. 100 meters in uh, volume. You still there? That yep, still here. I don't know if we're recording cinematic lava. mode, but we're gonna, uh, or if you're recording, but we're gonna fly here up. So yep, we're at we the bottom are. Of the about 70 meters. We forward. are rolling photogrammetry. Photogrammetry, right? 
might be a good cinematic. Yeah, this is the yeah. the Yep, yep, they're seeing it on feed three and feed one. Uh, right now, feed three is triclops. Yep. All right, I'm going to put in a 20 meter move towards the uh, towards the target, or yep. not yet. Yep, no, I'm ready. All right. Look at Chris's map. It looks like Herc's right in the bottom of the caldera in the baking yeah, it is. lava. That's, yeah, that's because it is. <laughs> Gee, it really is. hot down here. Bridge, bridge nav. Yeah. Uh, we need to get out of let's here. Let's do two zero meters, uh, zero <laughs> seven five. Yeah, I don't know if we can get if we can get the the multi beam uh, map. There it goes. Yep. So, so you were you were ahead of us. Thank you. And feed three. Yeah. So there, you can see uh, see Hercules and the deep deep purple being the deepest part of the caldera. Hercules right under that red grid. And we are doing photogrammetry and immersive filmmaking right now. That's what we're recording. And immersive? A twofer? A twofer. I like it. And a twofer in two parts. I will try and uh, do some immersive flying. But, uh, Is that hard rock there or sandy? No, that's that's uh, that's basalt. Yeah. And just that little uh, that little coating oh. of uh, some of that sulfide precipitate. I th I think the thought is this all happened in 1996. So that's not that very long ago. Most everybody here was probably born by then. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was alive. <laughs> yeah, that was the year I was born. The year, the year you were born. Yeah. <laughs> so, so to some people it was long ago. <laughs> to others of us it was just yesterday. So. I was yesterday. not alive yet. <laughs> wow. Of your who, who, who is that? Your Ma Mono, is, uh, you you went up to the world. Oh, that's no. So, I'm, that so I'm that's a 99 baby. Far in the past to some. <laughs> They're sending your map out to the world at the moment. Uh, viewers asking if that was part of Pele's pit that we were seeing up uh, the vents. Yes, this this is this is Pele. This whole thing we've been exploring is Pele's pit. Uh, and and if if I remember correctly, before 1996, there there was no crater here. It was just a part of the flat top of the caldera. There were a couple of other craters, uh, two other craters. Uh, I think they call them east and west. We crater, can always change it if we need um, to. That are older. But uh, then in 1996, there was a whole bunch of seismic activity. Something was going on, magma moving. And what appeared to happen when people came back Probably to take a look was the that uh, uh, magma had withdrawn <laughs> from this area, leaving this pit. Yeah. So the oh, and they, and there were, there were yeah. low, the low temperature vents we were We can take it off the there if you surface. need to poke it. But uh, after the magma withdrew, forming Pele's pit, it's more important um, to get the data than there were these much hotter vents. A pretty screen. And it's, it's quite a shame we couldn't measure the temperature now of, of what that shimmering water we saw was. Um, but uh, the last measurements I saw were we, uh, for some of the vents in the 70s move, degrees centigrade and for some over 200 degrees centigrade. Oh, boy, that's a good question. I think... Uh, it really depends on the rate of the of the activity, but it's Good it's, for another it's growing all the time, and, and uh, I'd say give it a give it a couple of million years probably uh, or more maybe, but uh, I think it's uh, that 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 hot spot's been there for an awful long time, so I, I don't think that we have any reason to think that it's going to shut off, and so it'll, it, things will things will keep going. And just as we saw, we saw we saw uh, the big island grow here. How far through away the recent uh, recent eruptions, and it's actually increasing increasing in size. And and, and this this grows along too. The, the, there's not really much separation between uh, the uh, big island 10, and yeah, we where we are well. now. It, it's uh, th this is really Mauna Loa being yeah. the very big big volcano, Kilauea being kind of a side volcano on that, and this is really another side volcano on the big Mauna Loa structure, which all represents the the current the current hotspot. Are you talking the 
why it's dancing around like that is what the issue is. Yeah, so if you can come up uphill now, if you can. As someone's asking, so the area at Yellowstone could look like this in a few million years? Oh, so yeah, yellow, there's certainly a you know, very equivalent type type um, phenomena in terms of uh, a hot spot at Yellowstone and, and, yeah. and certainly a huge uh, magma Taking chamber beneath it. Filter? Um, that's all, of course, subaerial now, not, not underwater. So I think the processes will be quite different. And I think uh, they're probably happening have much more slowly, sliders. I suspect, at Yellowstone. But I, 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 do, I don't know that uh. for sure. And I think the, the other side is that at Yellowstone, we're really not seeing mountain building processes like we are here. So the, the it may have something to do with the depth of the magma and the fact that Yellowstone, there's certainly a plumbing s a circulation system that's plumbing hot water uh, through that magma chamber, but it, we don't see active, uh, real active uh, mountain building going on um, at Yellowstone in terms of volcanic events. Uh, we do see that further west. I can uh, pause for a minute if that's um, what you want to do. Mount St. Helens is like a, barely a great example of, of, of uh, a minutes. volcano that clearly was uh, catastrophically active not that long ago. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are quite a few. Uh, just offhand, the Azores, I think, represents one. Um, uh, whether the Galapagos represents one or not, I, I can't say. The Galapagos may be more of a, a leak on the on the ridge system, um, but uh, yeah, there are others. Yeah. Tonga Tonga. Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. Um, it It's often very much related to the viscosity, the type of the magma itself. Um, and so uh, Hawaii is, in a sense, blessed with uh, very, very slow, steady magmatic activity. Uh, what happened in uh, in Tonga was uh, uh, back there a very, like very quick release of magma um, that super heated the water, led to a huge, huge, uh, just an unbelievable explosion that you know was just sent particles, shockwaves all around the world. Really, really quite amazing. Um, and uh, created giant landslides. We haven't talked about it on the side of, of this uh, volcano and many volcanoes, uh, the Big Island too. The, the volcanic activity will, will often set off undersea landslides. And so the, the Tonga event was, was really, really quite different in terms of being a, a, a instantaneous, uh, we call it phreatic, explosive uh, volcano and again it has a lot to do with the gas content of the magma how much pressure the magma is under how quickly it's released and it's and it's fundamental chemistry and again uh, in Hawaii that just doesn't happen because of the nature of the of the of the magma active of the magma itself um,
So is, is the island gone? Well, another good hot spot is Bermuda. That, that Bermuda is another good hot spot. That, uh... Yep, good for another 20. Uh, a viewer is mentioning the Azores. Yep, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the Azores is one. That, yeah. has, the Nautilus, uh, has the Nautilus ever been around that area? Uh, the Nautilus, uh, when it started, its work started in the Black Sea in about 2008, 9, moved into the Mediterranean, spent a lot of time in the Mediterranean, and I um, can't remember exactly what year came across the Atlantic. It transited the Atlantic and moved into the Gulf of Mexico and then finally to the Pacific. And so I don't think, except for the transit of the Atlantic, I don't think... Uh, I don't think that Nautilus has actually spent a lot of time working in the in the Atlantic. That was in 2013, because that was the first time that I was on board. Which when, which was when at, right after it transited the Atlantic. So in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Uh -huh. Yeah, I got on uh, in Galveston, Texas, mm -hmm. and then we transited the Gulf to go to the the Cayman Islands and do mm -hmm. hydrothermal vent mm -hmm. stuff right. uh, there. Uh, viewers commenting that the Hawaii magma is graceful and ladylike. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. I love uh, that just description. around here waiting for the Atlanta to swing in. Okay, see, now that we've moved up back uh, onto the wall a little, out of the, the base of the pit, we're back to this accumulation of precipitate, and we're seeing more of the pillow-like outcrop. And we're heading to a waypoint where, in the past, uh, venting was seen. And we're quite close now, so we should keep our eyes peeled. It's happening with the DP there. It doesn't have a... Uh missing its uh, two goal time. And the DB screen is missing its two goal time. Ho hope they're not having some grief. Thank you. So what was it, uh, waypoint two? Was it just an arbitrary point on the... Well, th this was a place where the Nautilus uh, um, saw venting, made a bunch of measurements. Oh, yeah. At least that's what my sources are telling me. base of a pillar it was. That was kind of a pillar here in front of me. Uh, what was, sorry, what was the exact, exact depth? Um, on our dive plan for waypoint two, uh, the depth says uh, 1,282 meters. And that was uh, where we previously sampled, was it? Supposedly, yeah, that's um, where they potentially saw the second, or the, yeah, the other venting site. All right. Thank you. They left a marker, Taylor in. What was that? Was there a marker? No, not that I know of. Oh, I, I think it would be the bacteria would be the, where things start. 
and then uh, that would then kind of move up the food chain eventually. Um, but I think from all the reports we've heard, there there haven't been. Um, yeah, come up. Th these organisms uh, haven't moved in here yet. They're just too, out, just too so recent. So I, I don't think in any of the reports I read that associated with these events were any were any kind of living. Uh, so you're basically right on top of waypoint two. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. let's just Is look there around. Is there any pictures or a particular uh, heading or anything like that? To yeah, was there a marker left here from the 2018 dives? Uh, no I'm gonna idea. I'm gonna bring our, uh, Atalanta a little closer. Bridge, bridge, nav, 10 meters, zero nine zero. Correct. Uh, uh, viewers asking what type of samples have we taken so far? On this dive, we haven't, and actually, we have a, a kind of unique situation that this has been. A dive really oriented to uh, photogrammetry and, and the immersive camera. I was going to say, oh, look at that shimmering water, but it's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but this white precipitate water. is interesting, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so because uh, the emphasis has been uh, focused on the imagery and the photography, uh, they actually tried something uh, quite interesting in putting a light source in one of the manipulator arms. So that actually... Uh, uh, Eliminates Lee. You might want to, if you can zoom down in there and see what's going on. So we hadn't really planned on on sampling uh, on many of these uh, these legs because again the focus on this entire uh, mission has been uh, the imagery and the photography. Although we did uh, on a couple occasions uh, do some sampling. Um, of both a uh, dead sponge and some manganese nodules, too, or small manganese fragments. Yeah, and I'm going to pass it on to Rachel to describe the camera because uh, she is uh, by far the expert here. All righty. Hello, everyone. So, yeah, so um, this is the, I believe, uh, ninth or tenth dive of the, this expedition, NA-156, which has been really focused on uh, the actual, the name of the cruise is called Ocean Exploration Through Advanced Imaging. And this is a, you know, this is a little bit u different than a traditional Nautilus science cruise. Uh, the real focus is a 100% on using imagery to, or, or imaging tools, cameras to, um, shall we say, um, to explore the, uh, to explore the seabed without touching it. So we've 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 taken a very limited number of samples. I think we're on sample ID like seven, which if this was a more traditional Nautilus cruise, like we'd be on like over a hundred by now. Um, so the. Uh, the Triclops, what we call the Triclops, the Wide Field Camera Array, there's actually three cameras in one. And for those of you watching at home, uh, if you look on your Stream 3 on the Nautilus Live page, uh, you can actually see the real-time images from all three of those cameras. And this is the reason why we call it Triclops is because we have a total of three cameras in the system. So it's like a Cyclops with three eyes instead of one. Um, so what you're looking at is the the majority of stream through. Uh, stream three is the view from our what we call our cinema camera, and that has a. What's unique about that camera is that it's physically it's mounted higher up on the vehicle. Uh, you can see the sort of the, the largest image uh, relative to the two in the we have um, the lower left corner and the lower right corner, uh -huh. which come from the other oh, two yeah, cameras. Right. Um, so if you look at the, the cinema scared. cam, which is just kind of the, <laughs> the biggest one in the screen, uh, you notice it has much more of a top-down perspective. And the, the camera itself is physically installed higher. Uh, it's, it's looking down at a sharper angle. And you can tell that you're seeing a lot more of the top side of a given feature, uh, like this rock here that we're circling around. And the... You can see that this position, you know, it, it's good. Um, it gives us 
a, a different angle. It allows us to see the top features. Um, it's, but you notice things look a little bit flatter in this. The, um, so that you can, uh, you can compare that view to what you're seeing in the lower left and the lower right parts of the screen. And the uh, lower left and the lower right, what we call port and starboard, uh, these are a stereo pair of cameras. So the, so the rationale for having three different cameras is the number one uh, advantage of this setup is that it, it really allows us to visually, we get to cover a lot of ground at once. Um, we had a, because this, this expedition is very focused on, like, we're not just, you know, we're not just recording video to record video, we're recording video so we can actually process it using photogrammetry into a 3D computer model. So we can actually, you know, instead of just hitting play and watching the video, we can actually pull this into a 3D model, much like what we're doing with Norbit, and say, oh, okay, here's here's a actual model that we can scroll around in, and we can zoom in, and we can zoom out, and we're not stuck just hitting play and, yeah. and watching hours Creeping of video. The closer to the cliff. Um, the Excuse me for a sec. Would it be possible to zoom, zoom in down there yep. as much as we can, see what's going on? And where we see the white precipitate, too, on the wall. But let's first zoom in. Seems the, the most likely place for... Is that is what we're seeing rising coming from your thrusters, or is that? Yeah, last time I came in here, I completely okay. dusted it, so yeah. okay. you can see it's very, very uh, light. But I should be able to come in here and float yep. through without stirring it up too much. It's a bit tight there for Hercules. And if, as you come out, if you can look off to your right too, to where there was the white precipitate. Yeah, right there. Bonk. I think right now he's looking down probably something that's that's a vertical crack in essence. And we have a question online uh, about the name of the site. So this is Kamaehua Kanaloa okay, Seamount. Come up a bit there, see if you can get above that wall. The white stuff here is what you're yep. interested in yep. there? Mm -hmm. up a little bit there, hopefully. I don't know. Come up another five there. I didn't see anything down around uh, 1280, so we're going to yep. come up a bit here, come up the wall. Yeah, and actually, um, yeah. thanks, John. You got a great point about the IMAX side. Uh, so, if you look at the the you know the three camera views, you'll notice that the 
lower left and sort of the center, those have a, um, I guess you could say like a relatively normal, um, you know, relatively normal view of what we're seeing here. Whereas in the lower right, we've got a really, uh, we've got a fisheye view. And the mode that we're in right now is we're actually, so the left and the center cameras are, you know, as the vehicle's traversing over this feature, uh, pan, um, we're getting two different angles every second. And that's really helpful for our bit, photogrammetry process so that we have that, you know, that computer depth perception. Uh, but on the right, this is where we're, we're recording north, actually, uh, it's a fisheye view. But the, the idea behind the fisheye view is that we're getting 180 degrees. So that is our, you know, while we're doing the, the photogrammetry on the left side. All right, you want to put a move in? Uh, let me get for for photogrammetry, we also have our uh, immersive filmmaking. This is sort of our IMAX uh, targeted recordings going on the lower uh, right. Yeah, you can put it moving, Chris. By the time it moves, I'll be. And bridge, um, bridge now, two zero meters due north. I saw we had a question come in about how the cinema camera looks a little, little bit blurrier compared to the other two. Um, so the important thing to keep in mind, I think what's what's causing that is that the, so the, the image that you're seeing and that we're seeing topside is not actually the real output quality of the camera. And the reason is that we only have so much bandwidth available to, to download in real time from the camera. We so the, um, yeah, because we only have, we only have a, a gigabit per second of bandwidth. So what's happening is that the, um, the live video feeds from each camera are actually compressed. And what's happening is that the, the cinema camera is just full screen, so it's blown up a lot more. Uh, and the reason why we're using that compressed video is because we're, uh, we're prioritizing making sure that that bandwidth can be used to download the actual raw images, because that's what's going to be going into our computer model, and that's what's going to be going into this, this IMAX, you know, IMAX style recording. Um, so I think if we were to, um, we have things laid out this way because it's, um, it's, you know, it's the most intuitive for our operators and our pilots here. But I think if we were to blow up, say, the lower left of full screen, you'd can see can, a bit more of those. Zoom Again, zoom in where it's white there. Roger. Sorry, Rachel. Go. No worries. Yeah, um, and then there was a question, do uh, critters show up in the model? I assume fast ones wouldn't, but like sea cucumbers and... Yeah, the uh, um, like the models that uh, Zach was uh, working on, you can see corals and sponges uh, in those 3D renderings, which is pretty Zoom cool. On the white bit for us there, Copy yeah. that. Yeah, and actually, so sometimes the um, animals they sometimes they help the model, yeah, and thanks. sometimes they really kind of hurt the model. Uh, for things that are stationary, like corals. The corals are really helpful because they help us reference, you know, the corals are, they're very easy to see. They're very, they have a lot of contrast, but, you know, they're staying in the same okay, position. Okay, thank you. Okay, I can go wide things. Um, whereas something like a fish that's going to swim in for a second and then it's going to move along, um, those can actually be a bit of a pain to filter out. Yeah, actually, that's a great question, too, about ac accessibility. Uh, so something that we have done for a couple of these dives is we've actually been able to 3D print the, you know, we, we've reconstructed the model of, say, uh, the, the wall of the columnar basalt. And we were actually, you know, a couple hours within a couple hours after, we were actually able to 3D print out an exact scale copy of the, which right now, um, we don't have it in the van. I think the SCFs are using it for an, in an interaction, but we were actually able to print out a scale model of exactly what we saw on the seabed.
Yeah, absolutely. In fact, one of the, you know, so, so part of why we've, we've called the cruise uh, ocean exploration through advanced imaging is that the real goal of this is, you know, we have our scientific objectives, but this cruise is unique because we have our science objectives yeah. and we have our technology objectives. And the real, you know, the, the real big picture outside of just exploring these features is we want to have more interactive tools for exploring. And it's been for, you know, for as, as long as we've been doing this, you know, the, the only way to interact with the video has been to actually just sit there and, and hit play and watch it in a linear fashion. Whereas now we're, what this new technology is doing is, is we're no longer locked into that linear model. And that, um, that makes it easier to, it makes it more accessible because for say somebody who's entirely blind, you know, we can, we can 3D print features that they can feel. Or alternatively, um, if you're looking at the structure, you know, right now we're looking at the structure of the seamount. If you're just looking at the real-time video, you're looking at it through a straw. Whereas with our photogrammetry models and with Norbit, you know, we can actually show the bigger picture. This is what the entire feature looks like and not just see it through, you know, see it through the straw. So again, we, we've uh, now crossing back over this uh, remarkable rubble field, which which I assume is the collapsed roof of the magma chamber before it withdrew. Right. Really very different than what we've seen on the walls and other places, the pillows and, and things like that. Um, this is just this rubble of a, imagine, imagine a, a thin, cool layer of lava on top of the magma chamber and then the magma withdraws and it collapses. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we Manel's working on that audio issue. Um, so it looks like uh, maybe uh, we were having a little bit of audio issue, folks. But it should be working now. Okay. John, will you say something on, on SPL? So go, you, you want to say something on SPL so we can test it out and see if we can hear you? Yeah, so several people comment about this uh, broken talus, and again, I, I suspect that's the, the roof of the magma chamber that was a, a relatively thin, cooled layer. Um, and then when the magma itself withdrew, um, creating the collapse pit, this Pele's pit, uh, this is that roof that's, that's just broken into small pieces and, and fallen down at the bottom, bottom of the pit. Good for another move, Dan. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna back us. I'm gonna do a little. I'm gonna do maybe like a three four zero. Keep so Herkins up on the waypoint. Right. Bridge, bridge nav two zero three four zero. All right. Affirmative.
You want to test your mic? Yes, can you hear me, hear me better now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I'd asked a series of questions, and I'm sorry, apparently it was not going out, but you repeated the questions. And um, one question I was asking, Rachel, who's the camera expert here, is will it be possible with this IMAX high-resolution imagery from this revolutionary uh, camera to not only see this in an IMAX theater format, those who are visually impaired can create a three-dimensional model of it, but what's really exciting, I think, is that we, in this era of high-speed internet, exceptional bandwidth, you'll be able to immerse yourself visually. You'll be able to step into the caldera of this volcano uh, using the internet and a handheld device. Is, is, that, is that essentially correct, uh, Rachel? Is that sort of the way this will work? Absolutely. Uh, one of the items we have in the data lab downstairs is we, we have a couple of VR headsets that we've started to test with. And the, you know, so what we're talking about are, are basically different workflows where um, what are new sort of, what are new ways to um, uh, see the, the products of all this imagery. So um, one of the pathways we've been testing is, you know, we, we know that we can make a 3D model, but what we want to try and say is, oh, well, it's one thing to scroll through a 3D model on your computer with a mouse and keyboard. But one of the things we have in the data lab downstairs that we've been experimenting with is actually putting on a, on a VR headset and um, actually being able to, you know, see that, uh, see that projected in front of you. We actually, we found an interesting, uh, one of the interesting quirks of the VR headsets is that trying to use them on a ship is a bit difficult because you know, normally, like if you're just sitting uh, in your living room or something with a VR headset on. Dan, can you could you zoom in on that? Excuse me, Rachel, for a second, because uh, one of the viewers has actually had an, an interesting point that, that we yeah, need to we take a closer good. look to see. Maybe this is uh, what they they're described as a high high class light, which is a, a more uh, a deposit of um, fine fine particles as opposed to basalt itself, which could also have been on the top of the. Uh, and, and as we zoom in closer, I think they're absolutely right. We'll see. Yeah, we're getting well, some good questions online. It's hard to. It's still hard to tell. No, I'm. I'm. I'm going to come back. To think that that actually is pieces of basalt, broken pieces of basalt with a with a sulf, with a sulfur yep. coating on it. Let's see how close we can get. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to my basalt description, <laughs> and 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 it's just it's just been coated with uh, with the sulfur. Uh, Hyaloclastite is more of a almost a sedimentary deposit, uh, uh, fine particles that that have uh, uh, been created by the 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 volcano, instantly cooled little particles uh, cool, they become particles and they act like a sedimentary. Material, but I think I think what we're seeing are, are basalt fragments here. Okay, thank you, Dan. Sorry, Rachel. <laughs> and uh, somebody mentioned that they're watching on okay, YouTube. Well, no uh, but gotcha. remember also, if you go to nautiluslive.org, you can uh, send us a message or type a question to us. Yeah, I think um, one of the things we were discussing was about the. So one of the challenges we run into with using VR headsets on ship is that, you know, normally if you have a VR headset and you, you know, you move your head, that's because you're moving your head. And the, the headset itself can sense, oh, actually one of our, one of our SCFs is showing off one of the 3D printed models now on, a, uh, on an interaction. But um, so the issue we've had trying to use a VR headset at sea is that, you know, you have a combination of I'm looking around in the virtual environment but I'm also on a moving platform that's <laughs> moving in six different, uh, right. you know, yeah. directions of motion. In, uh, and um, even maybe a what's small, wild small is, move, and that should get you to waypoint one. Right up. Yeah, you, know, you put Pre the headset on. Have Ten meters due north. And um, you put the headset on, and even if you're holding your your head totally steady, the world itself is moving around you because the headset has trouble due seeing. North what's ship motion and what's your actual head motion. Yeah, Zach was saying that it, was, it kind of made him a little sick um, to, when he was trying it out um, because of that. Yeah, so it makes sense. It really be really, really cool to see once we're on land. <laughs> what's the yeah. uh, waypoint one depth? Yeah. Stand by. Stand by. 
Well, and uh, you know, see, here, here we go through this transition from the rubble of the palace yeah. to uh, much more uh, of a, a frozen lava lake surface. This is probably the uh, the yes. bottom of the of the withdrawn surface, or the top of the surface as it withdrew. And Larry, what causes the basalt to break up into such uniform yeah, chunks like that? I mean, like these, that? these depths are just pulled right off the bathymetry, though, which is not super precise. Not my suspicion, so I wouldn't worry too again, much I'm about not an that. expert in this, this, but my is that... So they um, didn't look up the previous expedition? And get the, the lava depths. was at a particular level. Uh, and not for these waypoints, I don't think. It cooled, and we it formed this relatively thin layer. And then the lava withdrew, still molten. So you had a thin layer that then was cooling and cracking, and right. and fell, actually Not fell. The the um, and that's what we're seeing is that debris that fell, and, uh, and I, why they're fairly uniform in size, I don't know. Maybe it was yeah. cooling, cooling cracks or something. I, I, I don't know. But as the caldera deflated, as the magma left the yeah, chamber so beneath the caldera, it cracked the surface. And look, look, look at this beautiful flow structure in the just gorgeous in the lava itself. Wow. And so that that's what you'd call a ropey lava. Yeah. I just wanted to add on to the immersive video conversation. We actually have, I'm not sure how recently, but we have a couple of the uh, formations from this expedition up on Sketchfab. Um, and that's actually a public, publicly accessible platform where you guys can go in and check out uh, the columnar basalts. I'm not sure if we've uploaded anything since then, um, but that's just a really cool, you know, public access way to explore now. Yeah. Yeah, thanks That's for that. You know. um, and there's also a model of the Nautilus, too, that you can uh, 3D print. That's pretty cool looking. And could yeah, you I believe we it, did it, upload. Oh, sorry about that. Go ahead, John. No, I was just going to ask if you could repeat for the audience their web address. Where do they need to go on the Internet? What's the exact address so they could type it in and go see those two sites and see that imagery? So I don't have the exact address. Rachel, do you have that? Um, it's they can probably access it on nautiluslive.org. That's true. Nautiluslive.org is yeah. where. Yeah. So so this this texture, this lava texture, this ropey lava texture, it's called pohoihoi, and this is really just a, a textbook example of that. And that is in contrast to another type of texture, which is called. We got, we got uh, a ray. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> which is much uh, sharper and, and fragmented. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got some viewers admiring all the layers and the, how the lava cooled. It's very, very cool looking. Hey, Larry. Oh, what is that? Skate is at waypoint got one. We uh -huh. got a ray. Yay. Is that? This is amazing. A, is it a skate or a ray? Oh, we saw we saw this one before with a very, very Yeah, uh, I think it was a six-skilled stingray. Yeah, the six-skilled stingray. I think that's uh, what... Taylor Ann identified it as before. Yeah, it looks similar, just more white in color. So I'm going to double check that ID and make sure it's not anything different. One of the first creatures to move back into this brand new part of the Earth. Um, I look at that view on Triclops. That is so cool. You can look at it from the side on uh, Channel 3. Oh, uh, somebody actually was nice enough to give us the link. It looks like sketchfab.com slash evnautilus. Thank you. Could you repeat that? Sketchfab.com backslash evnautilus. Perfect. And this is where Dan becomes the real cinematographer here. <laughs> Just doing these awesome follows. And he gracefully flies out of the picture. So this is uh, waypoint one. Yep. This is it. All right, this let's take, it. take a look around here. And then my suggestion is we start climbing up. Unless, uh, I don't know if uh, Jonathan has some other demands. Someone commented that that was a big skate. Uh, it's actually a six skill stingray. What's the difference? So typically, skates do have that shorter nubby tail, which is probably why they made that ID. I was also thinking the same thing. 
Um, but in our guide here, it's saying it's a ray. Uh, if we could get a closer look at the tail, we would be able to see if there's a barb or not. Um, mm -hmm. And that would be a really big uh, telltale. I hope he wasn't attracted what? by our nice pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where telltale came from? <laughs> Um, somebody's commenting there does not seem to be much current in this area. If that's the case, would that be the reason why there's not much life around here uh, other than the stingray? That, that's, that's probably true um, because it is so sheltered because we are in a pit, in essence, a pit that's on the order of uh, 80 to 100 meters high. Um, it probably doesn't get a lot of current flow. I think uh, Dan has documented that there's not much current flow. Um, and therefore nutrients aren't brought in, and so it's probably not a good place for a lot of things to live. Um, also, you know, think about the fact that as recently as 1996, there was uh, activity here, um, and uh, that doesn't make it a very good place for people to hang out yeah. either. <laughs> Definitely active. And it's also interesting to note that the clearer the water is, the less nutrient there is in it. Uh, less food there is for creatures to eat and if there's death who don't smaller creatures there could be no bigger creatures uh, to eat them so the uh, one of one of the uh, astonishing things i've learned from working with dr ballard with all of you brilliant scientists and engineers on the nautilus is that the the clearer the, the clearer the water the less nutrients so essentially a cubic yard of clear mid-ocean water contains less life than a cubic yard of, of uh, sahara desert sand and um, so the, 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 this is not much current, not much nutrient, not much food. There's no little creatures and therefore no larger ones. Yeah, and somebody online is pointing out that how unstable the surface is. So nothing uh, benthic would, would kind of last too long there. Um, yeah, nowhere to hide from the little guys. Yeah, I mean, if I was a coral, I wouldn't want to be on those rocks that were probably moving a lot all the time. Yeah, so hopefully... What's going on here, Larry? Oh. Oh, uh. Little bump in the middle Larry. of nowhere. Larry's talking to Jason right now. I'm going to do a uh, pirouette around this guy. So Madison uh, says that the six-gill stingray is actually quite rare, it seems. Yeah. Um, as I'm looking through my guide, it doesn't seem to have been seen at this depth before, um, at least wow. according to the Okeanos uh, guide, which I think it has been a couple of years since that's been updated. So um, it could have been seen before at this depth, but um, in my guide, it's been seen at max 800 to 1,000 meters, and we saw it at 1,300. And that's the second one we've seen on this expedition. Yeah. On this watch, even. Really. Yes, exactly. <laughs> gotten quite lucky. Yeah, very lucky. Just to continue the food trend here, some of these, some of this pillow lava looks perfectly like a scoop of ice cream. I've been thinking <laughs> that, but didn't say it, so thank you. <laughs> it had more, to be said. Um, more food references. Looking at this uh, sonar image, what do the little red lines indicate in the, in the different color? variations indicate for the people on the in the audience listening what are they seeing when they look at this sonar image um so, so that screen is not uh it's not being shared uh he's got a, a different one manel um give me a sec yeah mm -mm. bonk
apparently the image I'm describing is not on line, but it uh, uh, will be available on NautilusLive.org at some point. According to my search, I am seeing that the six skill stingray has not been recorded at this depth before. Ooh um, so far, it's saying 1,200 meters. Oh, wow. So potentially, yeah. But I'll keep checking to make sure that's correct. Larry, I'm sorry. I, I need to highlight that. Appropriate, he'd be seen on Halloween because he emerged out of the darkness like a ghost and then disappeared. John, talking about your little lava tubes, here's a mini version of. Uh... Yes. <laughs> yes. When apparently my microphone, people couldn't hear me online when I talked about that, but I'd asked Larry, who's an expert geologist, about why don't we see more lava tubes underwater as we do on the surface in lava flows as in New Mexico and as we're you know, all familiar with. And here's one, as Larry points out, on a smaller scale underwater, where the molten lava flowed so out and left cool. a tube. And in the future, as I mentioned, and apparently folks couldn't hear this, but it turns out these lava tubes are gonna be a very important place for humans to live on the moon, on Mars, undoubtedly on other planets, because they're already there. You don't have to dig them. They're uh, shield, they shield the people inside from radiation, which is a real problem on Mars, which has no magnetic field, and on the moon, which of course has no magnetic field. Lava tubes will be an important place for humans to live in centuries to come. Rachel, it's also astonishing. You said briefly earlier that this data is being transmitted. We're limited to a gigabyte per second. Is that right? Yep, uh, gigabit. Uh, and, uh, gigabit. That's incredible. Think about the very data that is a gigabit, gigabyte per second. It's extraordinary. And that's using Starlink technology, or how is that being broadcast out from the ship? So we actually, uh, so there's, there's actually, it's a two-step process. Um, the first is actually getting it, so the, the vehicle itself getting it topside uh, to where we are right now in the Nautilus control van. And then uh, the, so we have a much, the, so the vehicle to the van is, uh, is much faster because it's, you know, there's probably about 20,000 feet of fiber there. Um, but yeah. the, but the advantages 7, is we are 7280 7, meters from Dan. Um, so the so that is a very high speed p path, but it's you know it's a physical connection between the ship and the vehicle. Um, for getting data to shore, we're actually using two technologies in parallel. Uh, we are we do have a new uh, Starlink maritime antenna, which is uh, located on the top of the control van. And that gives us, but that uh, Starlink is designed more so for downloading. It's designed for more, you know, general internet use. Um, so the connection that we actually gives us more bandwidth for uploading to shore is the. It's from another company called Marlink, and it's a fairly traditional marine uh, VSAT using satellites in geosynchronous orbit. So the. the I think so. You have to check with the. Uh, All right, Larry. About my pay grade. You want to start going up the slope, maybe to the east here. I, I, yeah, I can't hear you. Yeah, we're um, thinking of um, heading, um, zoom out a little. Uh, moving up, first of all, we around 1160 meters and moving to um, more the north, the northeast a little. So towards this peak here or, uh, well, or no. towards this saddle? Well, halfway in between. <laughs> here? Yeah. All right. Not that, not that far. We're within this, within this bit. Now, so here. Yeah, yeah. A, a, the 1160 meter uh, contour right. is what we want to aim for. 